What does a tiger have to do with religion? Let's find out. This is Den on Religion. Hey peeps, it's Dr. B with Ten on Religion. The idea of a journey has long fascinated humanity. Sometimes journeys are framed externally as a temporary travelogue or a permanent relocation. Other times, journeys are construed internally as intellectual, emotional, or spiritual experiences over the course of time. The story of the life of Pi heavily draws on both the external and internal aspects of the journey concept. The Life of Pi uh, was a novel published by Jan Martel in 2001 and subsequently made into a movie in 2012 directed by Ang Lee. It was nominated for 11 Academy Awards and won four of them. One of the main actors, Irfan Khan, who passed away in April 2020, also stars in another one of my favorite movies, The Namesake. It has a similar journey theme based on culture rather than religion, and the depiction of cultural clashes in that movie are really excellent. Now, if you haven't watched the Life of Pi film, please stop right now and come back after you've seen the movie. Uh, not only will we give away key plot points and refer to the ending, uh, but much of this vlog is not going to make any sense if you've never seen the movie. Uh, so go watch the movie and then come back here for the vlog. Okay, uh, we're going to do a quick overview of the plot as a refresher for those of you that haven't seen the movie uh, in a while and then do a deep dive into some of the religious themes and imagery uh, going on throughout the entire picture. First, the inspiration for the film was the earlier novel, but the novel was based on multiple tertiary influences. These influences included a Brazilian novella, Max and the Cats, and three different Richard Parker accounts from literature and history. Uh, the characters, though, are not direct copies from the original sources to the 2001 novel, and yet again, the characters are not direct copies from the 2001 novel to the film in 2012. As elements in a great plot, the characters can be both no one and anyone at the same time. The film can be divided into a series of journeys, uh, which all comprise a much larger journey uh, communicated in retrospect uh, from the first scene of the uh, arriving author at the professor's house to the end scene at the same house. Uh, the film possesses an organic unity in that if any of the scenes were removed, the final conclusion would not really have the materialized effect that it does. Uh, the film has uh, basically three distinct sections which are readily discernible to any viewer. Uh, the beginning is composed of the scenes in the present day with the visiting author conversing uh, with the professor and it continues through the early life of Pi until the ship sinks and he loses his family. Uh, the middle section comprises the entirety of the lifeboat experience at sea as told via a series of long flashbacks with the occasional return to the present. Uh, the third section is the conclusion and it represents everything that happens after the rescue, which includes the Mexican hospital scenes with the Japanese businessmen uh, and the climatic final conversation between the professor and the visiting author. Uh, some of the most interesting films uh, include uh, plots that either arouse amazement or plots that are complex. This film has both. Plots that arouse amazement contain terrifying and pitiable incidents, and there are a number of these in the film, not least of which includes the shipwreck and being stranded on a lifeboat with a tiger. <laughs> Yikes! Uh, complex plots are those in which the transformation of action is accompanied by a recognition a reversal or both. Now, I don't think that the life of Pi could justifiably be construed as including a reversal, but it undeniably contains a recognition. In fact, the salient question at the end of the film is who recognizes and what is the content of that recognition? Uh, there is the scene where the Japanese businessmen at the Mexican hospital in the past uh, do not believe Pi's first story, and after hearing the second story, go back to opting for the first one as authentic, as evidenced by the final report read by the visiting author. Uh, this is one of the last lines uh, in the entire movie. Uh, then there is the final climatic scene of the professor asking the author which story he prefers. After the author indicates the first one, the one with the tiger, that's the better story, uh, the professor quietly and subtly declares, and so it goes with God. Uh, inferring or perhaps implying that the entire set of experiences were religious in nature. The whole thing was a religious journey. 
When one reads the novel, however, the conclusion is not nearly as clear and obvious. Uh, but in the film, uh, if the viewer is able to pick up on all of the clues, uh, left like a trail of breadcrumbs, uh, both visually and orally in the dialogue, uh, the recognition of what just transpired hits you like a bombshell. Let's get into some of the religious themes and imagery of this picture. The film Life of Pi is a journey, or perhaps a layered series of journeys, slowly revealed in a bifold way. There is the external journey of a lifeboat adrift across the ocean with a wild tiger. Uh, then there is the internal journey of inquiry into the nature of religious pluralism, uh, as Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism are all referenced, both directly and indirectly, in the film. The ship the family travels on, the Simsum, is a Hebrew word for God contracting light to make space so creation can happen. Uh, the Jewish themes of Noah's Ark and the suffering of Job are obvious, uh, as is the Buddhist skillful means theme of taking a boat to the other side. Uh, when the uh, shore is reached, uh, the boat is no longer needed. Uh, the storms represent trial and tribulation, with Pi losing his family in the first one and all of his survival supplies in the second one, uh, while calling out uh, the Islamic names of God and seeing an epiphany of the Hindu god Vishnu in the clouds. Uh, after nearly giving up all hope on life, a floating carnivorous island, uh, also in the shape of the Hindu god Vishnu, appears, uh, the god who is the sustainer of all life. And we haven't even gotten to the tiger yet! Uh, the tiger is polysemic symbolism, uh, which means uh, it can easily symbolize multiple things at the same time. Uh, kind of what happens in religion. Uh, the word God, for example, is a very flex flexible term. It can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, in the storyline of the film, the audience learns at the end that Pi is the tiger. In the hospital scene, Pi explains uh, he couldn't understand the happy Buddhist sailors' on suffering. Uh, suffering is the first of the Four Noble Truths in Buddhism. Uh, during an earlier scene, uh, we also learned that the tiger's original name was Thirsty, but due to a clerical error, was switched to the hunter's name, Richard Parker. Uh, the original tiger's name, Thirsty, uh, relates to Pi. First, uh, he was called Thirsty, ironically, in the beginning of the film, by the Christian priest, uh, and much later uh, as a reference to the second of the Four Noble Truths in Buddhism, as desire or thirst, as the cause of all suffering. This tiger, Pai, originally sacrifices his love in India to his girlfriend, Anandi, and throughout, as, as much of the film is played out, gives himself up to God as a sign of eliminating his desires, and thus he is no longer thirsty. Then the floating island appears to ultimately carry him to his final redemption. Uh, when the tiger left him on the shore, uh, part of Pai was relieved that this ordeal was over, and another part of Pai was anguished beyond belief at the ending of the struggle. What a poignant statement about the concept of journey in religion. So what are the religious takeaways from this film? The themes of polysemic symbolism and religious truth as a participatory event are prominent in the relativity of a relational hermeneutical model. We interpret reality with religious experiences based on the ones we participate in. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, the movie asks of the viewer what, if any, is the difference between historical and mythical stories. Uh, we all believe in stories whether we realize it or not. Uh, which is the better story? Why should one be preferred over the other? Uh, the end result is how one comes to the point of choosing which story to believe. In the film, the religious mythos of multiple traditions helped Pi overcome his many struggles, uh, ultimately leading to his redemption while simultaneously finding God in the midst of the journey. The life of Pi has an organic plot with an overall unity of action. The final climatic scene leaves the audience thinking and reflecting on the myriad religious symbolism contained in the power of story itself. Put simply, it's a really cool movie. Well, I hope this vlog has helped you better understand this topic. Until next time, stay curious. If you enjoyed this, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. This is 10 on Religion.